Okay, so let's have a look at what we need to do if we need to try to analyze uh, what's going on with a, a bearing where we don't necessarily know or control the temperature inside, uh, especially when we're, where we're talking like it's ambient cooling. So uh, this particular one, we, we do know some things about it. So uh, it's rotating at 900 revolutions per minute. So in terms of revolutions per second, that's going to be 15 per second. Uh, it's carrying a load of 400, 450 newtons. 450 newtons. So it's P. The, the bearing unit load is the 450 newtons divided by the area. It's got a length to diameter ratio of 1 and a journal diameter of 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters is the length. It's also the diameter, so we'll just square that. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.15 MPA. Sorry, 0 0.18 MPA. Uh, we also know that we're looking for a minimum clearance assembly condition. Uh, so given the combination of the journal diameter being at a maximum of 50 millimeters and the uh, bushing being at a minimum of uh, 50.05 uh, millimeters, we know that the diametrical clearance is going to be equal to 0 0.05, so the radial clearance is equal to 0 0.025. And then we can figure out what the R over C value is. Again, that's always based upon the uh, radial clearance. So that'll be 20, sorry, millimeters. It's all in millimeters. So 25 millimeters divided by 0 0.025 millimeters. And that's going to be equal to 1,000. So uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to kind of make an estimate for uh, what we can kind of expect uh, this thing to be doing uh, in uh, kind of, uh, we, we need to make a guess of but sort of like kind of initial conditions. So I'm going to say that a reasonable guess uh, is based upon, let, let's say, you know, we, we usually want the temperatures to be a reasonable amount below the point where they start to break down, which again kind of happens in that 90 to 120 range. Uh, so let's assume let's assume we're at a, an average operating temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. Maybe maybe we're above that, maybe we're below that, but that's a reasonable first place to, to start. Uh, you need to start somewhere, right? Uh, so uh, that would give us, uh, we need to go and look at our... Uh, We need to go look at the viscosity chart. So here's our chart of uh, viscosity curves. So uh, if we're looking at 75, then that's this line right here, which means that we would be looking at an absolute viscosity of, uh, what are we looking at here? That looks to me to be not quite 11. Uh, we're probably at, probably at 10.8. So 10.8 micro, uh, sorry, millipascal seconds. So 
So let's, uh, let's figure out what our summer field number would be in terms of the viscosity. So plugging in all the other stuff and then and the viscosity at the end, because we're going to kind of need to recalculate that. So our summer field number, uh, again, is equal to the R over C squared times the viscosity times the N divided by P. So if we're plugging in the other stuff first, we've got 1,000 squared times the 15 per second, revolutions per second, divided by 0 0.18 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared times our viscosity. So let's first figure out what those things are. 1,000 squared times 15 divided by 0.18 E6. So that is giving us 83.3. Uh, we are in meters squared per Newton second times the viscosity. So when we plug it for this condition, uh, we are with a Sommerfeld number of 8.3, sorry, 83.3 meters squared per Newton second times 10.8 times 10 to the negative 3, because it's a milli, milli pascal second, so pascal newtons per meter squared seconds. So the newton second cancel out, the meters squared cancel out, and we're left with what we kind of expect is a dimensionless number. So 83.3 times 10.8 e negative 3. That gives us a Sommerfeld number of 0 0.9. So uh, we can take that and we, what we can do is we can use that, uh, you know, that first initial guess to give us uh, an initial guess for what our uh, coefficient of friction was. So scrolling down here, and we are on there, 0 0.9. So that'll be that'll be this line right here. And that there course so from there our coefficient of friction variable, which remember is R over C F, uh, to me looks to be to uh, let's let's say Let's say it's 19. 19 sounds good. So R over C F is equal to 19. So therefore F is equal to 19 divided by R over C, which is the thousand. So we are left with 0 0.001, sorry. Not zero zero one nine zero point zero one nine yeah as our coefficient of friction so just a reminder of what that kind of means that means that our uh, sorry our torque due to friction is equal to F times the load times the uh, radius and that the heat loss due to friction, the, 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 the heat generated due to friction, the power lost due to this friction is going to be equal to that torque times its rotational speed in terms of radians per second. So we've got it, we've got this n term here in terms of revolutions per second. So we're going to multiply by 2 pi to make it radians per second. 
So our heat burnt is going to be equal to the load times the radius times the rotational speed times 2 pi times the coefficient of friction. So again, we'll just uh, solve for this in terms of the coefficient of friction first. So our load was 450 newtons. Our radius is, let's put this in terms of meters, so 25 millimeters divided by 1,000 millimeters per meter. That is 0 0.025 meters times 15 per second times 2 pi times F. So 540, sorry, 450 times 0 0.025 times 15 times 2 times pi. That gives us 1060 newton meters per second, which is a watt, times our coefficient of friction. So in this, you know, in the case that we guessed for the initial vis, for the initial temperature, uh, we are burning that with our 0 0.019 coefficient of friction, 20 watts. 20 watts of heat. So we've got, uh, that's how much, that's how much friction we, we, sorry, how much wasted energy due to friction we would have uh, in the, uh, based upon our initial guess. So what we can do is we can go in, now we can iterate. So again, we have this relationship here uh, for, for the average temperature in the film when we have ambient cooling only. So our ambient temperature was given as 20 degrees Celsius. Oh, wait, no, I wrote that on the wrong line here. 20 degrees Celsius. Our exposed housing surface area, that was what? Uh, 250 centimeters squared. We're gonna want that in meters squared. So 250 divided by 1,000, sorry, 100 squared. Uh, it'll give us 0 0.025 meters squared. And our H here, that's, in this case, it's 20 millimeter, uh, 20 watts. We want to, we're going to want to be uh, use, you know, uh, calculating this in terms of the watts too. But uh, and our overall heat transfer coefficient is based upon the conditions. So we're looking at this chart here. Uh, so the problem told us that we were working with still air and a keyway sump. Uh, so keyway sump, that'd be, you know, that'd be an oil ring or collar type um, uh, uh, setup. So we should be working for 7.4 uh, watts per meter squared degree Celsius. Seven point four watts per meter squared degree Celsius. So what we want to do here is we want to uh, figure out what the average full oil film temperature is in terms of our time rate of heat dissipation. So our T naught is equal to twenty degrees Celsius plus H divided by the CA. So 0 0.025 is our A in terms of meters squared and the C 7.4 uh, watts per meter squared degree Celsius. So 0 0.185 
watts per degree Celsius. So if we plug in something in watts here, those watts will cancel out. We'll get you know the degree Celsius moves up to the top. Actually, I'm just going to do that here. Degree Celsius moves to the top. So there we go. So plug in something for watts, or left with something in terms of the um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, we're left in degrees Celsius for our, our, our temperature there. So we're in the right units. So for this instance, our T naught will be 20 degrees Celsius plus 20 watts divided by 0 0.01185. Okay, so that'll give us that'll give us 128 degrees Celsius. So what we need to do is we need to, well, what that means is that uh, kind of the initial temper, our initial temp, uh, temperature guess resulted in kind of a bit more friction than we would have ex that uh, it, it resulted in enough friction that the act that uh, we'd end up with a higher temperature than than that. Uh, which would lead to a drastically lower, uh, which would lead to a uh, lower viscosity. So we kind of need to pick something in the middle uh, as um, as kind of our next next guess because it's you know because the temper because the viscosity is going to drop when we increase our temperature, we're actually not going to get up to that temperature the next time round. Uh, so picking something in the middle, let's so uh, we started off at 75, 128 divided by 2. Yeah, let's go for an average of 100. So iteration 2. Two. T naught is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So if our T naught is equal to 100 degrees Celsius, then let's go back up and figure out what our viscosity would be. Okay, so if we're looking at 100 degrees Celsius, Then we are looking at just above five millipascal seconds. So five point, f yeah, five. Well, actually, here, just one second. Uh, not five point five, five point two five. Okay, so 5.25, what we need to do is we need to plug that into need to plug that into this equation here. So, 83.3 times 5.25 millipascal, so E negative 3. And then, of course, once we, the, pa the same way we saw the pascals and the seconds cancel out, so well, the milli is really what's important here. So that That'll give us an S of 0 0.343. So from there, recalc, refigure, figure out what the coefficient of friction would be for that uh, uh, for that condition. So we're heating up. We're, the oil is actually hotter than we than we thought it would be. So we're heating it up more. So we're looking more here, uh, which means that 
uh, for the one line, that's the second one from the top. That means that we're looking more for a coefficient of friction variable of about, uh, let's say 9.5. Why not? So, again, that's going to be equal to 9.5 divided by the R over C of 1,000, 0.0095. That's a zero, not a six. And then we've got, again, our heat generated as a function of the coefficient of friction. So the 1060 times 0 0.0095 0 0.0095, that gives us 10 watts. So then we just, again, plug that into this equation here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. I'm not gonna copy and paste again. So our T naught here is gonna be equal to 20 plus 10 divided by 0 0.01, 0 0.1985. So that gives us a T naught, 74 degrees Celsius. So again, our actual number is going to be somewhere in the middle there. So basically the 100, you know, our, our initial guess of 75 was too low. Our, our next guess of uh, 100 was too, too high. Uh, so let's uh, maybe not quite halfway there because I think we jumped a bit too far. Let's try uh, 90 degrees Celsius. T naught is equal to 90 degrees Celsius for next iteration. So again, just back up to here. 90 degrees. At Looks to me to be what? Uh, just one second. I'll erase the extra lines that we don't need anymore. So, um, that to me looks to be, so uh, this is six. So uh, we're looking at uh, 6.8, I guess. Viscosity is equal to 6.8 millipascal seconds. So again, we'll just plug it into the formula for the S. 83.3 times 6.8 E negative three. That'll give us a new S Zero point five seven. So use that to figure out what our new coefficient of friction variable is. So that's the point five, so point five six. It's kind of right above that line, which means that uh, I guess we're basically right at this line right here. So that'll be 12. 
So 12 is our uh, RC over F, which corresponds to an F of 12 divided by RC, R over C, so 0 0.012. And then again, we just need to kind of uh, plug that into our heat generation formula. So that times the uh, 1060 watts, H is equal to 12.7. Plug that into this formula here, 20 plus 12.7 divided by 0.185. This gives us a new T naught of 88.7 degrees Celsius. You know what, close enough. We, st we started off with initial gas of 90 degrees and based upon that, that led us to an estimate of 88.7 degrees. So let's call it 89. 89 degrees Celsius and call it a day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so our coefficient of friction, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah that'll, that'll be close enough. Uh, uh, so our coefficient of friction, 0 0.012, our heat generated about 13 watts. Uh, and the other thing that the question asked for us, uh, so steady t state temperatures, coefficient of friction, and our minimum film thickness. So based upon this, now our minimum film thickness, we just need to uh, f go to here. So let's see. Got, we're looking at right about here. So we've got our minimum film thickness chart, and scrolling over, that to me looks to be, let's see, that looks to be about 0.77. So 0.77 is going to be the H naught over C. Okay, so 0.77 is our H naught over C. Again, that's radial clearance. Uh, C, as you recall, that was what? Uh, 0 0.025 millimeters. So our minimum film, th film thickness is 0 0.025 millimeters times 0.77 H naught is equal to 0 0.019 millimeters. So uh, there we go. Bit of iteration. Iteration is always annoying, but uh, especially, uh, especially, I think you'll you'll see here. You kind of you kind of need to make a reasonable guess, kind of about where you're going to take the what you're going to use as your next value for for the uh, uh, for the, like the temperature you're you're guessing. Uh, for, oh, sorry, not not for the temperature for the guessing. For the temperature, you're ma making a reasonable engineering estimate about. Uh, so in instances like this, again, like we started off with 75, uh, that led us to. Uh, yeah, you know, we started off with 75. Uh, that led us to 100, uh, and then that led us to 74. So, if, you know, if we did, well, you know, that, uh, that, uh, you know, you, you need to, uh, just, uh, you know, it takes a, might take a bit of experimenting to kind of figure out how, where it's kind of the best way to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's how we, that's how you go about, uh, doing that question.